We're ready to move on to problem three. Problem three says that in the figure below, if the square ABCD has a side length of three, find the circumference of the circumscribed circle. The first thing we want to do is we want to mark up our diagram with important information that's been given to us in the problem. The most important piece of information is that square ABCD has a side of length three. And if one of the sides of this square has a length of three, that means all of the sides of this square have a length of three. So we can go ahead and enter this into our diagram. Okay, now we need to look at what we are being asked to find. I'm going to highlight that in yellow we're asked to find the circumference of the circle that goes around the square. And if you look, um, the word scribe actually means to write on. And so uh, this circle is circumscribed around the square because it actually touches the square at four points. If a polygon is circumscribed by a circle, that means that that circle is going to be touching the polygon and its vertices. Okay, the circumference of a circle, what do we know about it? Well, if you remember our formula for the circumference of a circle is C equals two pi, R. So let's look at this formula for a moment. What would be the unknown value on the right side of the formula? Well, we know what 2 is. It's a constant. And likewise, pi is a constant, right? It doesn't change. We always estimate pi in any work that we do with um, the decimal 3.14. So the first two factors in this product never change. The only unknown in this formula is the radius. So in order to find the circumference of the circle we have in the diagram, we first need to find the radius. So that's going to be a key in solving this problem. The key to solving this problem is going to be find the radius. Now, believe it or not, the square is actually going to help us answer this question. And what I need for you to do is I need for you to look at the square and the circle, and I want you to look for parts that are shared by both the circle and the square. So I'm going to start by adding the circle center to the diagram. And if I notice, if I draw a diameter, um, let me see, maybe I can get something that's really straight here. Um, and I wanna use a different color here. Okay, so I'm going to draw the diameter of the circle so that it goes through the center, but it also touches points B and D, which are actually um, vertices of the square. And then I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can, whoops, 
Let's go back here. Okay, I'm gonna add the diameter of the circle and then I can also add the center of my circle. So what is really important is to note that um, the thing that the circle and the square have in common is this line segment DB, okay? So this line segment DB is the diagonal of the square and it is also the diameter of the circle. Okay, so now um, something else. We talked about how we need to find the radius of the circle. How can DB, line segment DB, help us find the radius of the circle? Well, if you remember uh, the relationship between the diameter of a circle and the radius of a circle, um, we know that the radius is one half of the diameter of a circle. So that must mean our radius equals one half of the length of line segment DB. And remember when I write DB without a bar above the letters, we're talking about the length of line segment DB. Okay, so if we can find out the length of DB, then we can find out the length of the diameter. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the length of DB. Okay, well, if we look at the diagram, we can see that DB is actually part of a triangle. Actually, it's part of two triangles. I'm just gonna look at one of the triangles. DB actually divides the square into two congruent triangles. And I know that um, both of the triangles are going to be right triangles because a square has right angles in all of its corners. So right now I'm going to focus on triangle DCB. or triangle DCB. And because we're working with a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the unknown side length. Okay, so we know that each of the legs of triangle DCB are equal to three units. Um, but we're looking for the length of segment DB, which is actually the hypotenuse of our triangle. So I'm going to call that C. So using the Pythagorean theorem, we have um, our A squared, here's our A, here's our B. So A squared plus B squared is going to equal C squared. Okay, simplifying what's on the left side of the equal sign, we have nine plus nine equals C squared. 
we can combine the nines to get 18 equals c squared. We can take the square root of both sides, which leaves 18 equals, or rather root 18 equals c. Now remember when we're working with radicals, we need to look at the radicand and see if there are any perfect squares hiding out under the radical sign as factors. I know that 18 can be written as the product of nine and two. And nine is going to be a perfect square. So by the product of square roots rule, I can separate out the two factors under the one radical sign into two radical expressions. I'm just taking the nine and the two and putting them under their own square root signs. And this is going to simplify to three root two since the square root of nine is actually three. Now this C is actually our diagonal. And notice it's a lowercase c, okay? This c does not talk about the circumference of the circle. It talks about the diagonal of our square, which is represented by the green line segment db. Um, are we finished with this? Did they ask us to find the length of um, <clears throat> line segment db? Well, let's look back, no. What we're supposed to find is the circumference of the circle, okay? And remember the circumference is represented by the equation capital C or uppercase C equals two pi R. So we're not done. We're still trying to find the radius of the circle. Well, we found uh, the diagonal of the square which is equal to the diameter of the circle. So to find the radius, since the radius is half of the diameter, what we need to do is we need to take the length that we calculated for um, the diagonal db, and we need to divide it by two. So I'm going to end up with um, three halves times the square root of two as our radius. Are we done now? Well, remember we're asked to find the circumference of the circle. So what we need to do is we need to take our value for the radius and plug it in to our equation for the circumference. So, to find the circumference, so we have the circumference equals 2 pi r, but we know that our radius equals 3 halves root 2. So we're going to substitute that value in for our radius. And we're going to see we can do some simplifying, right? This um, constant of two here could be written as two over one. And so I have a two in the numerator here and a two in the denominator here. So we can cancel these twos. And what we're left with is the circumference equals pi times three times root two. And often um, in answers, usually the pi is um, listed as the last factor. So we're just gonna rearrange the terms a little bit, but it's not going to change the value at all. So the circumference equals three root two pi. 
And this is exactly what we were asked to find. We were asked to find the circumference of the circle. So this is our final answer. So the first thing we had to do was to find the length of segment DB, and that would allow us to find the length of the radius, and that allowed us to find the circumference of our circle.